What is going on guys, it's Reflex here, and man, 16 years of Kingdom Hearts, and that's honestly kind of crazy to think about, because that's 16 years of my life being dedicated to a game, and honestly, it's been very fun, and I think everyone can actually, you know, attest to how great Kingdom Hearts is, because everyone honestly has played this game as a kid, and, well, I can't say everyone, but most people have. Whether you liked it or not, that's a different story. But I know many people that have played it and didn't even know they played it until later. Because I remember I asked my friend, I was like, you ever played Kingdom Hearts? And he was like, what is that? And then I explained it. He's like, oh, I remember that game. And he never knew that he actually played it until I explained everything. But, man, the fact that it's been 16 years and our journey is going to come to an end but also rather a new beginning with Kingdom Hearts 3 and my gosh it, after you know honestly when the 16 year anniversary was yesterday and it was announced and all that it made me kind of relook at you know my whole entire journey through Kingdom Hearts and the original Kingdom Hearts March 28 2002 it was honestly for me it was a little bit different because everyone played this game when it first well I don't know about everyone but most people played it when it first came out I was one of the ones that played it a little bit late because when it came I was more of a Metal Gear Solid type dude, and basically I was playing, I remember, I think I was playing, I don't even remember, I was playing something on the PS2, got bored of it, went into my game book, kind of like this DVD case where I held my games, and I stumbled across this, you know, game that I knew my cousin had, but I never actually paid attention to it, but, you know, it had uh, Goofy and Donald and then some random dude in the middle with some humongous shoes and I really wanted to try it because I was like this kind of looks cool and I decided to put it in and I could not play it at the beginning I could not play it I had to have a DualShock controller because I was originally using a PS1 controller on the PS2 you guys remember those days but yes it was kind of the end of cheating the system with that because it required me to get a new you know an actual up-to-date controller for Kingdom Hearts and I did so as soon as I put that game in I would have never thought that it was going to be the start of a journey of a game that I would hold so like just near and dear to my heart and have some of the best memories one with friends and another with my mother and honestly just held such great memories as a game franchise as a whole and that's why so many people cannot wait for Kingdom Hearts 3 and next up Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories now this game came out in November 11 2004 and it's fun fact about Kingdom Hearts 2, I mean Kingdom Hearts like I was saying, is that I played it late and when Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories dropped, I actually just started playing Kingdom Hearts, you know, the actual beginning of the journey that everyone already kind of experienced, but my goodness, this was a game that I honestly did not play though until Re-Chain of Memories came out for the PS2, but we'll get into that later, but next up, Kingdom Hearts 2, one, I, I don't know if it's... Ah, oh, man, I think this is probably my favorite in the series, to be quite honest, because it was just a lot of worlds, a lot of awesome just stuff happening, and it was just awesome. It was probably one of my favorite, but December 22nd, 2005 was the release date of Kingdom Hearts 2, and honestly, it still did not, it did not, you know, like, disappoint. Normally, games, when they come out with a few games, or even just a couple, it kind of gets to a point where stuff gets a little bit more... I guess you could say like it's a make or break type thing It either you know these sequels will either do really bad or they'll do really good and keep you kind of like into it and Kingdom Hearts 2 was no exception to that it was a great game and it not only kept me going with the series but rather made me enjoy it to just a better extent than it honestly was but my goodness Kingdom Hearts 2, I would say, is probably my favorite, and I loved it even more when it became Final Mix, but we'll get down to that when the time comes, but Kingdom Hearts Recoded came out November 18th, 2008. This is the one game that I can say, Kingdom Hearts-wise, that I did not play. I did not play it for the reason that it kind of looked... It didn't look like too much of an enjoyable game, and I think many people can actually attest to that because I know many people that said that one game that they played that they did not like, and this is there's another one in, you know, in the list that I will talk about, but this was one of them that many people did not like, but played it to play it. Now, I did not play it, but rather I watched people play it, so I still technically know everything about Coded, but I did not personally play the game. But, no, that's okay, in my opinion. That is okay. But, Rechain of Memories, December 2nd, 2008. This is when Rechain of Memories dropped. And this is when I actually played 
free chain of memories because I realized when this game dropped I realized that it actually you know this wasn't you know a brand new game but rather just a rehash kind of of what it was on the Game Boy and you know it was still awesome it was a very fun game a little bit different it was a little bit different a little bit kind of weird to get used to but it was still very fun and it was the first time you get to play as Riku well actually no that's a line not really I mean technically yes it is the first time you get to play as Riku as I guess like a whole character because in Kingdom Hearts 2 you do get to play as Riku for that one like minor second if you you know in a uh, um, Zimnus the boss fight at the end but that's if you even choose to have that happen because you can actually skip that whole entire part but yeah um, this was the first game we actually got to play as Riku and that was really fun honestly it was very fun to do that but yes Rechain of Memories was a very fun game in my opinion it got it took a little bit to get used to but it was honestly a fun game next Kingdom Hearts 358 2 days the I would say most repetitive and worst Kingdom Hearts spinoff out of all the spinoffs. Came out May 30th, 2009. But I won't lie, I did enjoy it when it first dropped for the reason that it was a new Kingdom Hearts. And I was honestly just, I was in need. I was in need of a new one. And I was in my DS crave at the time. I had my DS Lite, was always playing some Pokemon and stuff on the go. And this, I was like, a Kingdom Hearts game on the go? Hot dog, get me into this action. And... It was a fun game for a little bit, but after a while you realize how repetitive and boring the game actually was. And that's nothing to honestly like, it's not like it was a main game so I can understand it, but it did provide some very great backstory on Shion as well as Roxas and Axel and pretty much all the Organization 13 members. So it was a great game for story, but a bad game for gameplay and actually enjoying it. But next. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, this is another one that's kind of different, but it came out July, I mean not July, January 9th, 2010. Now, this game was a little bit different for me because I did not play it when it came out on the PSP. Rather, I watched it because, you know, I was in the DS phase and I really didn't want to buy a PSP to, you know, play one game. So instead, I, you know, was one of those ones that honestly just waited until the final mix came out. And then that is when I played Birth by Sleep, but still... Birth by Sleep it was a very, very fun game, and honestly, I would say it was, it brought, well, for me personally, my experience through it, it kind of struck me a little bit disappointment for the reason I thought that was going to be what Kingdom Hearts 3 was, because at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2, you see this cutscene, and it seems like it's for a brand new Kingdom Hearts, you know, in addition to the story, which it was, but I thought it was an addition, like it was going to do a tradition when it comes to, like, Kingdom Hearts 2, I mean, Kingdom Hearts 1, the special cutscene was for Kingdom Hearts 2, so I figured they were going to do the same thing, so for Kingdom Hearts 2, it was going to be a cutscene for Kingdom Hearts 3, so I just assumed that Birth by Sleep was originally just Kingdom Hearts 3, and then when that game came out, I was a little bit disappointed, because I was like, I wanted to play as my, the people I knew, but it did give really great backstory on actually a lot, a whole bunch, the Keyblade War, all this and that, Xehanort, a whole bunch, honestly, but still... A part of me was disappointed when the game first came out because I was like, this isn't Kingdom Hearts 3? What is this? But no, it was still a very fun game. But Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance came out March 29, 2012. Another game I did not play until the final mix. Now, when it came to this game, I, I, did, I watched it, but I was confused because I was thinking like, this is new because this... I would honestly when I look at this game I feel like this is originally like this is Kingdom Hearts 2.5 because it's honestly like the halfway mark between Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3 and that's how I feel about it now it looked like a very fun game and honestly the fact that you know we got to see a lot of the characters that we've seen in previous games you know in this it was cool and seeing um, Axel or Lee which I just I can't not call him Lee I have to call him Axel because Axel just sounds cooler to me but when I seen him actually have a you know was able to wield a keyblade I was like oh my god and his keyblade looks awesome I was just happy because I am an Axel or Lee fanboy so I enjoy that character very much that used to be the logo for my channel so that's a little bit of a I guess you could say secret about my channel but yes it was a very fun game that I did not play until later, but still, it was a very fun game to watch, and it added a lot more, it added, I guess you could say, story for the up-and-coming, you know, to be released, Kingdom Hearts 3, but still, it was very cool. 
and very fun. Now next, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Remix. This was released March 14th, 2013. And I remember playing this. Well, actually, I remember buying this. And I remember I got some comments from friends. And they were like, why would you buy this game when it's just basically the same game? Just basically you're getting three of the same game that you played before. And I'm like, it's Kingdom Hearts, man. I got to buy it. So basically when I bought this game, I... Uh, like I can't I don't know I don't exactly know my thought process on it but rather it just felt like a brand new game to me it was the same game I played in the past but it still felt very fun and very new and very fresh for the reason they did add some new optional stuff or stuff that was not foreseen in actually like Kingdom Hearts for instance like in Kingdom Hearts 1 there was some actual like organization you know like 13 stuff in there like cutscenes that was in the actual Kingdom Hearts 1 that wasn't in the original and also for Rechain of Memories and Recoded, Recoded was actually put into the game and I put a little bit of time in but not as much it still was pretty much an unplayable game for me but it was all honestly pretty fun now this next one is a mobile game it is Kingdom Hearts X well, that's what it was back then but it, I think it's like I don't remember actually I think it's like I don't know it's something but you guys know I do not play it the reason I don't play it and I probably should um, I just don't really play on my phone that much. I don't play many mobile games, but this was released July 18, 2013, and honestly, it looks like a very fun game. I just never got around to playing it, but I believe it's something like with the foretellers or something. I don't know. This one is honestly, I, as a Kingdom Hearts fan, I'm kind of disappointed in myself because this is the one game where I know nothing about. So I'm going to have to actually probably rekindle my love for the game and actually figure some stuff out because I have no clue what that game is. But Kingdom Hearts 2.5 Remix came out in October 2nd, 2014. Now I was very happy about this because this was the year I finally got to play freaking Birth by Sleep. And you know everyone else already experienced it but they didn't get to experience it with that controller action so when i played it i was very fond of playing it and i was very happy to finally play it as well as some more optional bosses in kingdom hearts 2 and what i mean by optional bosses bosses that will kick your ass and make you want to cry for your mother lingering will you are not my friend but playing that on critical mode you guys will understand true pain it was the original well okay dark souls came out before this but technically, I would say Lingering Will is equivalent to a Dark Souls boss, meaning as long as you plan on critical mode, though, but it is equivalent to a Dark Souls boss for the reason it's hard as shit. Now, personally, I find Dark Souls not hard anymore because I played it for so long, but still, you guys understand my point. But yes, Kingdom Hearts 2.5 Remix, very fun game. Finally got to play a game I did not play yet, so it was very fun. It was very fun, and I'm happy I actually got to play it. But this next one is... Okay, actually, now I realize this is what I was originally talking about. Kingdom Hearts Union X Cross, which this was released in September 3rd, 2015. It was a single player slash multiplayer game, and it was a mobile game. I swore this was the actual game that I was talking about, but I think it's the same, like, actual... Same story, actually. But I remember the gamer joint. That's the only way I watched that game being played, because, again, I don't play mobile games, but... I need to get into it so I know some sword because evidently the um, characters from Union X and all that is going to be a very strong, you know, like focal point in Kingdom Hearts 3. So I better catch up or else I'm going to be confused. But Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue was a very, very exciting game for me because I got to play a whole bunch of games I did not, you know, originally play. I forget what came actually with this game um but i do remember i know dream drop distance came in it and something else actually you know what since this is live like i normally do i'm gonna look it up i'm gonna see what's in here wait what is this what is this i can't find it i don't know what's in here but yes kingdom hearts 2.8 oh now i remember but uh dream drop distance you got um 0 0.2 i believe or 0 0.8 and that was basically um the like prologue to Kingdom Hearts 3 I believe that's what they considered it but that was a very just kind of 
I was just surprised that was a thing, but Aqua's base, so when I actually started playing that, I was very happy. Okay, so, oh yes, okay, so, Kingdom Hearts X details shown in the original game. So, it pretty much was, that was the third part of it. So, you got Dream Drop Distance, Birth by Sleep, the 0.2 kind of prologue, to, or 0.8 the prologue to Kingdom Hearts 3, and then you had the pretty much mobile game, I believe, like, remastered cutscenes and stuff. But other than that, it was still just, I got to play Dream Drop Distance, that was the main point I got it. And then, it brings us to present, Kingdom Hearts 3, it will not fail, it will not falter us. Once it comes out, it will be, honestly in my opinion, it will be a worldwide just cry of triumphantness for the reason, our, the game that all of us grew up with is finally going to release the final chapter of the Xehanort Saga to see exactly how it ends in a game we've been waiting for for a very long time. It's going to be fun. I honestly don't see it failing. I see it being one of the funnest Kingdom Hearts game to date when it drops. And it will be game of the year, as I said, the moment. Like, the first hour that I play of that game is going to be the best hour of my life. The whole entire, actually, I can't even say that. The first 70 hours, 80 hours, however many hours I put on it will be the funnest time I've had on indie game but yes that is my journey through kingdom hearts as well just to celebrate the 16 years of kingdom hearts it's been a fun fun ride but it's finally going to come to an end but as well as a new beginning so we are going to see what we have in store for kingdom hearts 3 but if you guys do enjoy kingdom hearts and you know are celebrating the 16 years of kingdom hearts with me let me know down in the comment section below just put I don't even know, just put whatever you want in the comment section. I was starting to think of a kind of catchy hashtag, nothing popped up on my head, not creative enough, but yes, if you guys did enjoy today's video, leave a like, subscribe, and you guys know the drill. I will see you guys later.